In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to walk together through three of the blurring effects that are available in the special effects room for you. On the screen, you see my ubiquitous little red cap, and I'm going to go ahead and hit the play button, and you'll see the default blurring of three kinds. First of all, it's normal. Now we have our blur effect, and then we have our Gaussian blur effect, and then we have our radial blurring effect. You notice on the radial, the blurring is clear in the middle, and then it's more uh, blurred toward the outside of the image. Now we're going to go back and look at how blurring affects an actual video clip. Here is blurring. Uh, once again, this is the normal blur effect on the timeline. And now we get to the Gaussian blur default again. And then we get to the radial blur for the third one. Let me show you a couple of the variations in each of these. So we have our regular blur here. Let me double click on it. Uh, we can control the mask of the blur, how much of it is blurred, the entire object or some of it. Um, or we can control whether it's a circle or an ellipse uh, or a box in terms of style. So let's go ahead and uh, just for fun change this to circle. And now we start out with an ellipse. If I want to double click on or click on mask, I can control the size of the blur. I can make it a perfect circle. If I uh, take the X and Y coordinates and try to adjust them, I have to do it visually. I don't have any uh, X, Y opportunities here. We'll just blur our gentleman here in the middle. And so if that's what we want blurred, we have that done. Click on OK. And so now the blurring for that the duration of that effect will only blur my guy. Now I also can control the degree of the blur. The farther to the right, the more uh, impossible it is to see. Farther to the left, uh, the, more, the, the less significant it is. And the depth of the gradient of the blur I can control. And then I also can inverse it if I want to so that everything is blurred except my guy. We have another uh, illustration of how you can start a video uh, with black with a circle coming out. You can also do this using keyframing. Just for fun, let's try that. We'll click on keyframe here. We'll go to the very beginning. Okay, we'll have the, um, we'll click on the mask here. And at the beginning, we'll have the mask be very, very small. And almost invisible here. If I, oh, I, have, I have to have it bigger so I can move it here. Okay, we'll start about in the middle there. And uh, we'll click on OK. And then we'll click the degree of blurring. And we'll make it massive. Then we'll take our scrubber, we'll move it toward a little bit into the clip here, and uh, we'll change the degree of blurring. Well, we'll leave it the same, but we'll change the mask. We'll click on the mask here, and now we'll enlarge it. Let's see if we can make it bigger than the. Uh, actual bigger than the picture if we can. Do I have a limit? Yes, I do. I cannot make it larger than the picture, evidently. OK, so we'll make it that big. Click on OK. And now if we go ahead and uh, click on our preview, uh, we can do something like that with keyframing inside our blur. So we go from small to larger in this particular case. And I suppose what we also could do though when we get to the second keyframe, we'll click over here, is we could uh, change the degree of blurring when we get to the very end to zero. That would clear out the whole screen. Although I might not want to do that to the very end if I just move the keyframe over here slightly. Uh, and then we'll just change the degree here to zero and see what that does. So it would move out 
and then the edges would disappear. So that works. Uh, so that's an example of how you can adjust the blurring uh, using your keyframe. Something else that you might want to consider is, let's go to our Gaussian blur here. We'll double click on it. We have the same kind of controls that we can use for the blur. Let's do, click on mask and use it differently. Suppose what I want to do is use this blur just for a small section here. Uh, I have the name of the, uh, the vendor of the garbage company here called Chitty. And so I can just go ahead and I can blur this one out. And you see this with license plates a lot in movies or children's faces, uh, in news stories, other kinds of things. And so I can click on that. And then as I go there, it, it, it blurs it out. Now the problem is, is I need to move the blur sometimes in my shot. We'll show you how to do that later uh, when we uh, talk about your tracking mechanism. And that's how that's done professionally. So you don't have to go frame by frame and keep nudging it. But uh, those are a couple options. The other third blur is a radial blur. And you notice again, this one uh, is clear in the middle and fuzzier on the outside. It has the fewest options. All you could can control here is the degree of the blur at the outside. You can't control the location. It automatically centers it but uh, you might find this useful in some kinds of situations. I'm scratching my head about how often I would use this particular special effect. But we have regular blur, Gaussian blur, and Gaussian has the same controls as the regular. And then we have a radial blur. So those are some blurring effects in CyberLink PowerDirector. Mm -hmm.